you take some uh, blood from a patient, yep. and then you are able to determine within 15 minutes whether they have a bacterial or viral infection. Hi there, everybody. This is John Medved, the CEO of Our Crowd, and we're back with Tech on the Front Lines. And uh, today we are uh, with uh, a very skilled CEO, uh, Eran Eden, who is the CEO of MeMed. You take you take some uh, blood from a patient, yep. and then you are able to determine within 15 minutes whether they have a bacterial or viral infection. The answer is yes. So we take a, a IV blood, it's a serum blood test, and then we measure a set of proprietary molecules of the immune system that go up or down in response to different bacteria and viruses. And using those measurements with computational algorithms, we translate that into a simple understanding whether the body's waging a war on the bacteria or the virus, whether to treat or not to treat antibiotics. That's the core technology. And now we're also working on derivatives that will look at capillary blood to make it even more accessible. Now, along comes Corona, this uh, heretofore unheard of uh, specific version of a family of coronaviruses, leaving the world in a shambles, okay, attacking uh, countries and cities everywhere. How do you help? Okay, so... First of all, the scenario of having an outbreak is something that I think the world has been looking at for quite some time. It's not the first time that this has happened. We had the H1N1 swine flu, SARS, MERS. And so as part of the offering that we can potentially give here, there's several extensions of the technology. The first one relates to severity. So an important question that you have if you have a patient, say, presenting to the emergency department, maybe even as a COVID positive patient, via PCR test, most will have a benign or pretty mild uh, infection, but some will then have more moderate and even severe uh, infection that might eventually end up in the ICU and even mortality. And a critical question is not only who has COVID, but actually who do we need to keep in the hospital, in the ward, and even the ICU, and who do we release home for quarantine? Answering that question will help better utilization of the resources, of the healthcare system, which are right now very scarce, and also enable us to have better, better, better treatment. So, so the idea behind some extension of our technology is to look at the immune response and to tell you who's going to be severe and who's not going to deteriorate. And apparently there's signals in your immune system that can, that can give you clues to that. And you're, you're now working on developing this. This is not not yet ready to be fielded, I'm assuming. So we have data that we've accumulated in the last few years on other types of infections that we've been able to prove or to show that those markers behave in a different manner to detect severity. But we do not have data on COVID. This is data that right now we are collaborating Got and it. collecting with multiple collaborators around the globe. So obviously the burden of proof is on us to show how this response is of the immune system happens in COVID. So if you get this done, basically, this can become a critical tool on initial triage on whether a patient should go to one of the hotels or, you know, uh, shelter in place at his home or be admitted and uh, get a bed ready and, God forbid, a ventilator in the ICU. The answer is yes. Yeah. The burden of proof is on us to show that it really works on COVID patients. But yeah, if we see the same type of patterns that we've seen on other types of infections, by the way, including uh, coronaviruses. So we had quite a lot of coronaviruses that we've tested in the past, and, uh, and we've seen some very, very promising results. But, but again, we have to test it on COVID patients. There is quite a lot of, I would say, team members. We'll start with the medical staff. We're working right now with the medical centers in China, Hong Kong, Italy, Germany, and Israel to get access to these samples. And again, to get the evidence, to get this thing running, we have the folks on the bioinformatics side that are working to analyze the data, folks on the molecular side that are doing some of the measurements. So it's really, so, and obviously there's a, there's a very big uh, team here that works, that's working in different aspects of the problem. Yeah, there's no lack of motivation, that's for sure. And no, I don't think it's impossible. I think this is, this is solid science 
with real core data that has been accumulated in the last few years. And now we have to just show it on COVID. So I think we're in the right direction. Good. The other element of the problem or of the crisis that we are right now working to potentially address is developing a universal diagnostic apparatus for viral infections. So we've all been hearing about these PCRs that are right now being uh, cleared using the emergency use authorization, which are a critical point uh, for detecting COVID. But there's another element which is looking at the host immune response. And by doing that, you can basically identify signatures of viral infections without trying to detect a specific virus. How does that complement more standard PCR technology? Several ways. Number one, it's generally applicable to outbreaks. So every time you have an outbreak, you have to identify the virus, you have to do the sequencing, and then you have to do the, develop the PCR probes. Here, you basically have some general warning signs that at the early stage of an outbreak, you can actually apply it until you have the more standardized technologies. Number two, sometimes during the outbreak, some of the viruses may mutate, thereby, thereby rendering some of the PCRs PCR less PCR probes less are, are useless if it's uh, mutated already. Well, sometimes performance can drop. So again, the fact that you have a general signal, a warning signal of the body that it's attacking a virus can complement some more standard technologies. And the third so thing about this it, technology- Would this be a, di a different hardware platform or would you use your existing platform? It's the exact same platform. And again, some of those biomarkers that we're seeing is the exact same biomarkers. So we basically have a set of proteins that our body is generating in response to different viruses and bacteria. And we're tapping into the same biomarkers with slightly different algorithms and translating that or answering different questions. Another interesting question relating to that is that because the immune system is exquisitely designed to detect viruses, if you listen to it carefully enough, it can tell you that you have a viral infection, even in a pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic stage, which is also a very important part. Wow. Of for, the this, for this outbreak, it's critical. We have so many people who seem to be spreading this stuff with either no symptoms or virtually no symptoms. And if we could figure out a way of really tackling that early detection, uh, that would be great. And we look forward to getting further positive reports from your tech on the front lines. This is uh, John Medved signing off with Iran Aden from MEMED. We'll be seeing you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye.